Good evening. I apologize for um, the delay. Had a few technical difficulties. For some reason, my computer does not want to cooperate, unfortunately. So we're having to use a different a different route. I had to use my iPad, so uh, I don't like the camera angle as much, and I can't see as much either. And I don't like that. I can't. It's not showing me who all is online. So we're going to wait just a moment and let some people come on. Wait just another couple minutes. Hey, Sister Cecilia. I'm so sorry that I'm late. I had some technical difficulties. We're going to wait a few minutes and let some folks get on the stream. Hey, Sister Mary. I had technical difficulties, so we're running late tonight, so I'm giving everybody a few minutes. There's Brother Cliff. I'm going to start calling Brother Cliff our uh, gospel DJ. Also, Brother Cliff getting in trouble today. I saw on Facebook. You need to be safe. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. The computer that I was using uh, to go live with, which I really liked the way that it did and looked, it did not want to open my camera for some reason. And so I had to switch around them on my iPad, and it's a little closer than I like to be. But we're making it work anyways. Look, there's Cousin Heather. Hey, Heather. Sister Mary, I got to keep y'all on your on your feet. Hey, Sister Lachelle, getting a good go dose of church today. Hey, man, we're gonna wait just another couple minutes before we get started. There's Sister Laura. People are coming on. I'm sorry. I've been apologizing. I'm sorry. I was late going live. Had some technical difficulties and had to switch things around. But we're going to give it a shot here in just a moment. Brother Mark, too. Good preaching tonight, Brother Mark. I was listening to you. One of the benefits for a pastor during a time like this is I get to go to church too, and that's exciting because I don't normally get to go to church and listen to preaching. I can listen to preaching all day, and I'm enjoying it. We'll give it just another minute, and we'll go to prayer and God's word. And if you if you have your Bible and you want to grab it, uh, I'm gonna go to. Psalm 113 tonight. Psalm 113. There's my other computer restarting. Psalm 
Hey Amen. I sent out a uh, text through the texting service where we've been taking up prayer requests and uh, didn't get anything back, but Sister Mary had posted that she fell uh, today, so we need to keep her in prayer and keep Brother Cliff in prayer. I don't know what he did, but he hurt himself in some way. He's doing okay, though, I think. Uh, and certainly many other needs that that we need to be uh, praying about. Certainly we need to be praying for our state and our country uh, this week. Uh, seems like the, the numbers are just continuing to increase on the spread of the virus, and we just need to be praying uh, for everyone's health and safety and praying that, that God would help people during this time. It's such a trying time, and we know that Jesus is the answer, but I think it's a time that we have to be much in prayer, keep our relationship with the Lord strong. It's important during this time. One of the things that I've thought of as, there's Sister Brooke. Sister Brooke, Heather's on too. Uh, one of the things that I've thought of during this time, just kind of as we're waiting for some more folks to join us, is maybe you've heard the phrase, I've, I've heard it many times, of dig the well before you need it. And I've thought, you know, during this time, I'm sure that many people are are drawing closer to the Lord. And I know that I'm certainly uh, using this time to strengthen my relationship with God because we have some extra time to be able to do that. But I'm so thankful that I have a relationship with God already. Uh, I don't know that it would be a great place to be in to have to establish a relationship with the Lord during this time. But I do believe that this time offers us a unique opportunity to draw closer to God. And I want to talk about that a little bit this evening, specifically concerning the Easter season. I think it's time uh, for us to strengthen our relationship with the Lord during this time. So I want to go to prayer this evening uh, to pray for you, pray for the week that you have coming up. And again, I'm sorry, I just don't like this shot shooting up my head like this, but uh, this is the best that I can do tonight. So y'all just pray for me. But I want to pray for you that you have a wonderful week, that the Lord continues to put a hedge of protection around you, and that the peace of God that passes all understanding will be with you. Uh, and we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful week in the Lord. Let's go to prayer this evening. I want you to pray with me. Don't just listen to, to me pray, but pray with me tonight. Father, we're so thankful this evening for the opportunity, God, to gather together in one mind and one accord. Even though we're not assembled, God, we are gathered and I ask that you would speak to our hearts this evening, that you would speak to us through your word. Lord, as we preach this morning, we're entering into the Easter season, entering into the, to the week of your passion. As today we celebrated your entry into Jerusalem, I pray that you would set our hearts in a position to worship you and to praise you. Lord, I pray that this week, God, would be a deep spiritual experience. Lord, that our relationship with you would be deep and during this time as we look forward to the celebration of your resurrection and we ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That's a good point, Sister Lachelle. I like that. All right, let me just talk to you this evening. We're going to have a little bit of a Bible study tonight. Uh, I've already mentioned, if you if you have your Bible and you just want to follow along with me, I'm going to read from Psalm 113 this evening. Uh, but let me kind of give you a, give you a framework uh, for where my mind is uh, concerning this passage of Scripture tonight. So I mentioned this morning uh, in in the the message I read Psalm 118. And I made mention of this fact that it is what that Psalm 118 is part of a set of psalms that begins at 113 and ends at 118 called the Hallel Psalms. When you hear the word Hallel, think of Hallelujah. They're psalms of praise. And these psalms are intimately uh, connected with the pilgrimage feasts that the Jews took to Jerusalem. Now, why is that important to us during this uh, Easter season? Because, hey, Sister Jan, love y'all. Pray y'all are doing well. These are particularly important during this Easter season because we need to recognize and realize that the events that take place uh, leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, 
They take place during the Passover feast, which is one of the pilgrimage feasts that the Jews observed and still observe. Now, why, why is that important to us? Well, it's important to us in a variety of ways, but let me give you one simple example. Whenever Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, hey, Sister Julie, love y'all. You keep Brother Cliff straight. He's getting in trouble today. I saw that. Whenever, we, whenever Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, he is sharing a Passover meal with his disciples. Whenever he said, take, this is the cup of the new covenant, he is, he is taking that old uh, Passover observance and he is transferring it to the church, the new covenant. So now it goes beyond the nation of Israel and it applies to the entire church. And I say that just by way of example to show that uh, these pilgrimage feasts, and particularly Passover, is intimately connected with the events of the week of our Lord's Passion, which begins today on Palm Sunday and ends on Resurrection Sunday on Easter. And so this set of five psalms, there's two different sets of psalms that are closely connected with the pilgrimage feast that the Jewish people uh, take to Jerusalem. The first set I've already referenced is the Hallel Psalms or the Hallelujah Psalms, and they're Psalms 113 through 118. Those Psalms in particular uh, remember the deliverance that God provided for the children of Israel out of the, uh, the nation of Egypt. Now, why is that uh, important? Well, I want you to think about it in this way. Passover is a remembrance of the passing over of the death angel uh, during the time that the children of Israel were captive in Egypt. They were in Egypt in bondage. And as you know, there were, uh, there were 10 different uh, plagues that uh, descended upon Egypt, but the only one that God called for the children of Israel to remember was the passing over of the death angel, which the, the last and final plague was the death of the firstborn. Very important. The second set of psalms that are connected to the Jewish pilgrimage feast are the Psalms of Ascent, which are Psalms 120 through 134, and we're not going to go into those uh, tonight, but these psalms would be sung as the uh, Israelites were making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Now let me give you an example. One of those psalms is Psalm 121, and we'll just quote one, one verse from that. I lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And so as the uh, Israelites make these various pilgrimage feasts, Jerusalem is on a hill. So they're, they're traveling uphill or up a mountain towards Jerusalem. And as they lift up their eyes, they see the city of Jerusalem there. And I say all that to say this that during this time, and maybe uniquely during this year, uh, during this week of our Lord's Passion, I think that we would do well to use this opportunity to draw close to God and to enrich our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I, I, I firmly believe that we will uh, study the various aspects of what was going on during this week. We have the events of the week recorded for us in the four Gospels. Uh, and if we will study that and also study uh, sober feast, I believe it will do wonderful things for our relationship with the Lord. So let's think about this for just a moment. There are five major themes in these uh, Hallel Psalms or Hallelujah Psalms. The first is the deliverance from Egypt. Second is the parting of the Red Sea. The third is the giving of God's law, the first five books of the Bible. Uh, the fourth is the resurrection of the dead. And the fifth is the coming of the Messiah. And these, uh, the Egyptian Hillel, particularly uh, Psalm 118, which we read this morning, they were actually sung in the temple when the Passover lamb was being slain. As I mentioned, they were sung during the pilgrimage festivals as well, all of the pilgrimage festivals. Now, there's three pilgrimage festivals that uh, the, hey, brother, buddy, that the Jewish people uh, observe. They are Passover. Pentecost and Tabernacles. Those are the three pilgrimage festivals that are observed. In other words, out of all the festivals uh, that are observed by the Jewish people, those are the three that they make the journey to Jerusalem or required to make the journey to Jerusalem for. And 
as we said, Passover was uh, during the week of Jesus' passion. This was the time that he was in Jerusalem. And so all of these people were gathered together in Jerusalem. And as I made mention this morning, it's a beautiful scene because as the Passover lambs are coming in the sheep gate on the opposite side of the city, Jesus, today we celebrated his triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, and he is coming in the other side of the city. The ultimate sacrificial lamb. How beautiful is it that all of the years that the Passover had been observed, that these lambs had to be slain uh, to uphold the Jewish law, that now Jesus is coming as the perfect and the spotless lamb. That's a beautiful, beautiful picture to me. And as I mentioned, even the meal of Passover, Jesus takes that meal and he institutes the Lord's Supper out of that meal, and that's a wonderful thing. Now let me make this make mention of this to you. Jesus fulfilled all, there are two sets of Jewish festivals. Uh, one set is in the spring, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost. Jesus fulfilled all four of those. Left to be fulfilled are the fall feast, uh, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I don't know this for certain, but let me submit to you this. If Jesus fulfilled the four fall feasts already, the spring feasts, I believe, he will fulfill as well. And so how would those be fulfilled? Well, we think about the Feast of Trumpets, that calls to mind the rapture. That we heard a voice as a trumpet out of heaven saying, come up hither. That's what John writes whenever he's on the island of Patmos. Atonement is the actual second coming, and the Feast of Tabernacles will be fulfilled by the new heavens and the new earth. Let me take you one step further into this idea that if we will observe the events both in Scripture and uh, these Passover traditions that the Jewish people held, I believe it will us uh, to a, a deeper place, deeper understanding of God's Word, and a better uh, relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 14, verse 26, says that they sung a song at the Last Supper. What would that song have been? Well, it would have been one of these Hallel Psalms, likely Psalm 118, which we read in praise this morning. One of the reasons that I particularly love the Psalms is that we see they're beautiful in and of themselves. They stand alone in and of themselves, but also they give us a unique insight into the minds and the of the uh, prominent characters of Scripture. And so, if you've ever wondered what was that song, it would have been one of these Hallel Psalms. I also think last week I read from uh, Psalm chapter 3, David is fleeing from Absalom. We read about those events in Scripture, but how is David feeling? What is the emotions that he is experiencing and the Psalms give us a beautiful doorway to understand some of those things. And so let's look at Psalm uh, 113 this evening if we can. If you'll give me just a minute to make some uh, quick adjustments and grab my Bible, we will take a look at this wonderful. Amen. Hey, Sister Sandra Ivy, good to have you with us gathering in church in one mind and one accord. Sister Sandra's a good friend from Panama City at Refuge. Appreciate you jumping on and being with us. Now, as I mentioned, these five Psalms, and I'm only going to read this one this evening, but they uh, remember the Exodus out of Egypt. Uh, and they look forward to the coming of the Messiah. And let me say this. Whenever we look to Psalm 113, you will see, if you have your Bibles with you and you're, you're already looking, you will see the psalm of prayer. And during this time that we are in in this country, I believe that it is extremely important that we hold on to and that we uh, even grow and strengthen in our praise unto God. During this time, there are many, many requests that we will have to make of the Lord. Uh, some people are concerned because 
of the job situation in the places that are closing, and we have to make requests to the Lord regarding that. Some people are concerned for their health and the health of their family members, and we have to make requests of the Lord concerning that. Uh, some people are on the front lines of this thing. They're the soldiers on the front lines of this battle, and we have to make prayer requests concerning that. But I would encourage you in this, that we must not lose our sense of praise and our sense of worship toward God during this time. Because if we lose that sense of praise and that sense of worship, then I think what happens in our own lives and in our own hearts is that it, be it begins to diminish that God is all-powerful, that he is in control. There is an understanding of that when we read God's word, but as we lift up a praise to God, I believe it really solidifies that in our spirit. When we praise God for who he is and when we praise God for what he has done, it solidifies in our heart that God is in control. Let me tell you this, just by the very fact that you are watching this live stream tonight, you are blessed and highly favored of God. I believe that. I've got to grab a hanky because I'm starting to spit a little bit. Even sitting in my chair, I'm spitting. Just by the fact that you are able to join together tonight, you are blessed by God. I know that there may be people watching this far and wide, but you can't help if you look at some of the maps and look at some of the statistics to realize that here in the panhandle of Florida, we're a blessed people. God has put, uh, I believe, a, a special hedge of protection around us. Now, I'll be honest with you, when this whole epidemic and pandemic started, I prayed to the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, if you could uh, have a little bit of, of grace, if you could have a little bit of mercy on the panhandle, we really need it. Uh, with Hurricane Michael that came through, I said, Lord, we really need a little bit of grace and mercy. If you would put a hedge of protection around us, uh, we would sure, sure appreciate that. And I believe that he's done that. Even when we look back to the hurricane, when we see how great the damage was to the landscape and the physical structures and how small the loss of life was, God has been good to us. He's been good uh, to this community that we're in. He's been good to the panhandle, our counties, and our surrounding cities, and I give God praise for that. But it's important that we hold that praise to God as a top priority during this time. And so let's look at this psalm uh, this evening, and let's let it speak to our spirit, and let's let us strengthen us during this time. Psalm 113 in verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? A uh, commandment or a request, if you will, to praise the Lord. Who should praise God? Well, his servants should praise him. Amen? His servants should praise him. I'm a servant of God, and I need to be praising him. Even during this time, does that change my position in the kingdom of God? Does it make me any less a child of God that there is an epidemic and a pandemic? No, it does not. Does it make me any less a servant of God, the things that are going on in this country and in our world today? No, it does not. I'm still a servant of the Most High God, and I should, as it says in the end of that verse, I should praise the name of the Lord. Now, we could go off on a whole different direction about the name of the Lord, how strong that name is. There is power in that name. Verse 2 said, says, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Wow. From this time forth and forevermore, blessed be the name of the Lord. When I think about that in the current context that we're living in, from this time forth and forevermore. Church, the praise that God is due, the honor and praise that we should be giving to him, uh, does is not contingent upon the times that we are living in. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. 
how powerful that is that the name of the Lord should always be praised. And I pray that you believe that this evening just as strongly as I do, that the name of the Lord should be praised. Verse 3, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. How often should we praise the Lord? When should we praise the Lord? Well, this, this verse tells me first and foremost that we should be giving praise unto God each and every day. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. First of all, we must do it on a daily basis. We must praise God on a daily basis. Furthermore, I would look at this verse and I would say that this speaks to my heart and to my spirit that I need to continuously have a praise upon my lips and a spirit of praise in my heart unto God. You know, there's something that is interesting during this time. Uh, not to get too personal, but I would not consider myself on the front line, but I do work in public health, and so I'm, I'm kind of uh, second tier, if you will. I'm back up to some of the front line people, but I'm interacting with these people every day uh, that are dealing with this virus, and there is a marked difference between those that have a faith in God and those that do not. The way that they react, the way that they handle themselves, you can tell that there is an assurity in those that have a faith in God that people do not have in and of themselves. And so we need to praise him from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high, verse 4 says, above all nations and his glory above the heavens. So God is high above each and every nation. His glory is above the heavens. In other words, we could not articulate or comprehend the glory of the name of God. He's high above all nations, each and every nation on this earth. God is high above. Verse 5 says, Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, and let's go to verse 6 with this, who humbleth himself, to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Now, let's slow down here for just a moment. Verse 4 says, The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. How many times do we speak of heaven and we say, Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. We don't have the words to describe how wonderful heaven is going to be. And verse 4 tells us that God's glory is even above the heavens. It's above uh, the heaven that we could imagine. It's above the heavens that we see in the sky whenever we look at the stars at night. His glory is more glorious than all of that. And then it says, Who is like unto the Lord our God? He dwells on high, but yet he humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Wow. What a mighty God that we serve, that his glory is high even above the heavens. And what a mighty God that we serve, and a merciful God, and a gracious God, that he humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Friends, you know what that tells me? It tells me that not because of how good I am, not because of anything that I have done, but because of who God is, his eye is ever upon me and it's ever upon you. Because he is one that humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. Now, when God beholds those things, we see that his spirit of graciousness and his spirit of mercy is at work. Verse 7 says, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. Those that are in the lowest of states, God sees them. And I would say tonight, even those that are in the most dangerous of states right now, God sees them. And it said, He raiseth up, raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. What is the psalmist talking about here? 
talking about the low state that we can be in. And we may consider ourselves to not be in a low state, but let me tell you this, each and every one of us, Romans says, that we are we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. Each and every one of us, apart from Christ, is in this low place, a place of need. Truly, apart from Christ, we are poor. Even if we have all the riches of the world, we are still poor apart from Christ. And apart from Christ, we are certainly needy, but Christ supplieth all our needs. That is the God that we serve, friends. That is the God that we're talking about praising this evening. The one that humbles himself even to look upon the things that are in the earth. And not only does he look upon them, not only is his eye upon you, but he extends a hand to raise you up. Jesus came down, the word became flesh, dwelt among us. Dwelt among us. Isn't that wonderful? And he lifteth up the poor and the needy. Verse 8. That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Talking about the wonderful things, the great things that God does for his people. My camera's in a different place. I apologize for extending my hand there in the wrong way. Let me tell you this. This psalm, as I mentioned, is a psalm of praise. And it's a psalm that would have been on the hearts of people when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday. And I believe firmly during this time that as we make our requests known to God, as we ask God to protect us, as we ask God to watch over us, as we ask God to be with those that are afflicted, I believe that we must keep our praise to God strong. The sun rises, and the, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is the Lord's name to be praised. Let me make this mention that the sun circles the earth, and so the Lord's name is to be praised in all the earth. It's to be praised right here, Washington County, Jackson County, Cottondale, Chipley, Mariana, Alabama, Florida, the United States, North America, South America, Asia, Europe, all the places God's name is to be praised. I think about, when we think about the Lord humbling himself, the kind of reaction that people would have uh, if the president or somebody like Bill Gates was to visit Mariana or visit Chipley. I think most of us would raise our eyebrows and we would think, why on earth would a person like that come here? It's not a majestic place. It's not a place that would seem worthy of a person like that time. But we serve a God that is so wonderful so gracious that he humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. And I believe tonight, I feel this in my spirit, that he is humbling himself to see you right where you are, right in your situation. We know that these are trying times, and I know that they are trying in different ways for each and every person that is watching right now. Some of us have uh, concerns uh, as I mentioned earlier, regarding regarding work, perhaps a place of business is closed. Some of us, if you're like me, you have concerns about going to work. Some uh, may be having to make adjustments in their jobs. Our teachers have had to make adjustments. Our healthcare workers have had to make adjustments. And when it seems like everything is in turmoil, let me tell you who's not in turmoil. God's not in turmoil. Jesus Christ is not in turmoil. None of this takes him by surprise. And we can say, oh, Brother James, that's, that's just wonderful. I know that. I know God's in control. But friends, we're not just simply talking about a God that's in control. We're talking about a God that is in control, whose glory is higher than the heavens, and he humbles himself to behold the things that are in the earth. And that includes you. And that includes me. And that includes the time that we are in. It includes this pandemic that we are experiencing. And it includes each and every person who is 
fighting this virus, each and every person who is praying, each and every person who is sheltered at home. It includes each and every one of us, and I praise God for that. Let me encourage you this week. I wanna, I'm going to make every effort I can to come to you as much as possible this week to talk about how good God is, to lift up a praise to him as we look forward towards Resurrection Sunday and look forward towards Easter. But let me encourage you tonight, keep a praise to God on your lips. Keep the joy of the Lord in your heart. We may wake up in the morning and what may be running through our mind is all the things that we need God to do, all the prayers that we need to pray, all the protection we need to ask for. But let me encourage you, begin your day with praise. End your day with praise. From the rising of the sun into the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Let me pray for you this evening. Pray that you have a wonderful week. Pray that you will carry the spirit of praise with you wherever you go. Jesus is going to a lot of places this week because you're going to take him there. Well, some of you, he's staying at home with you, and that's a wonderful thing. Some of us going to work, and that's a wonderful thing. Love you, Sister Barbara. Thank you for watching. I want to pray for you that you have a wonderful week. Uh, pray that the praise unto God that he deserves would ever be on your lips this week. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for those of us that have gathered together this evening in one mind and one accord to look to your word. Father, I thank you for this week that we're celebrating. Jesus, today we mark the day that you rode into Jerusalem. And as I preached this morning, it wasn't the first time that you went to Jerusalem, but this time you came to Jerusalem for a specific purpose. You came as that sacrificial Passover lamb. And Jesus, I thank you for that. I thank you that on this Friday, we look to it, Good Friday, the day that you suffered on the cross, shedding your blood for each and every one of our sins, that we could have a relationship with God if we would accept you as our Lord and Savior. But Jesus, I thank you for the Sunday that's coming, for the resurrection day, because you did not stay in the tomb that they put you in when they took you down off that cross, but you rose again. And the scripture tells us that you are seated at the right hand of the Father and that you are ever making intercession for us. Thank you for being such a good and gracious God that you would humble yourself to see us, to see us in our need, to see us in our struggle, to see us in our time of difficulty. And God, I pray that you would see us this week. And I pray that you would hear our prayers. We've been asking much of you, Lord. And I thank you that you've been hearing us. But God, I ask tonight for those that are listening, those that are watching, and those that will listen and watch in the future, Lord, that we would carry a praise on our lips, that we would praise you from the rising of the sun into the going down of the same, that there would be a praise on our heart in the morning, that when we lay down to bed at night, that there would be a praise on our heart, that when we wake up, we would not wake up with a spirit of dread, but we would wake up with a spirit of praise unto God. That when we lay our head down at night, we would not lay our head down in fear or in worry, but that we would lay our head down praising God, saying, Lord, thank you for another day. I praise you for seeing me. I praise you for keeping me. Go with each and every one of us as we go throughout this week. Lord, continue to speak to our hearts and draw us closer to you as we celebrate this week of your passion. We ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. God bless you all so, so much. I look forward to these times, look forward to seeing the messages. I wish I could hear your voice and get a neck hug, uh, but God is helping us. I do ask, please be praying for me. Uh, the job of a tech man and a pastor is a lot bigger than I anticipated it to be, but God is helping me, and I appreciate him so much. Appreciate each and every one of you. Let me remind you, we're going to be leading you in communion uh, on Sunday morning. And so you prepare the elements within your home, get some bread, get some crackers, whatever you want to use, and some juice. And as we celebrate Easter and we bring an Easter message, we're going to close that service sharing and leading you in communion together. So be prepared for that. Invite somebody. Uh, tell them to like the church Facebook page. If you'd invite them to, to Easter, to church, to come with you, then tell them to be watching online. We're going to bring a message of hope uh, on this coming Sunday for Easter. And we're looking forward to it so very much. God bless you tonight is our prayer. Have a wonderful week. Give a praise unto God this week. We love you tonight.